Good evening and welcome to the first of three meetings tonight. My name is Dennis Buckley, Mayor of the City of Beach Grove, and at this time we will convene our Board of Sanitation meeting for Monday, February the 2nd, 2015. Uh, in lieu of a roll call, I will ask each participant to introduce themselves, beginning on my far right. Ed Bell. Dan McMillan, Clerk Treasurer. Craig Wiley, City Attorney. Sandy Seward. Thank you, Board Members. <coughs> Uh, you have been uh, presented a printed copy of the previous uh, minutes of the meeting dated Tuesday, January the 20th, 2015. The floor is open for questions, comments, or corrections. I have none. I have none. If there's no questions, comments, or corrections, I'll ask for a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I'll make said motion. And I'll second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I also vote aye, and the motion carries. Thank you. Approval of claims. Uh, this evening, uh, board have uh, claims dated February the 2nd, 2015. We have four pages of claims in the amount of $207,205.98. The floor is open for questions or comments. I have none. I have none to say, though. No questions or comments. I'll ask for a motion to approve the wastewater claims dated February 2nd, 2015 in the amount of $207,205.98. I'll make said motion. I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I also vote aye and the motion carries. There is no unfinished business to carry over from the previous meeting. We have no new business tonight for the Board of Sanitation. Comments from board members? I have none this evening. I have none. I'll ask for a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll make said motion. And I will second. The meeting is adjourned at 6.03 p.m. We will convene again at 6 p.m. on Tuesday, February the 17th, 2015. The Board of Works will convene in 10... <coughs> Good evening and welcome to the second of three meetings tonight. My name is Dennis Buckley, Mayor of the City of Beach Grove. And at this time we will convene our Board of Public Works and Safety meeting for Monday, February the 2nd, 2015. Uh, in lieu of a roll call, I will ask each member to identi identify themselves beginning on my far right. Ed Bell. Dan McMillan, Clerk Treasurer. Craig Wiley, City Attorney. Sandy Seward. Thank you, Board Members. You have been uh, presented a printed copy of the previous meeting's minutes dated Tuesday, January the 20th, 2015. The floor is open for questions, comments, or corrections. I have a comment, please. Um, Dan, we're um, under new business where we talk about the ambulance write-offs for 2014. Mm -hmm. It, it's basically just as we've done this in previous years and the amount of the of the write-off which is two million dollars and we approved it that was it I think you know if you look at this like a year from now and someone who doesn't know what that is I think we need some kind of an explanation of why we wrote off two million dollars okay I don't know if that's is that necessary I don't think that's the right figure I think that's the total figure that was presented of what they uh, of what they uh, received in revenue I think they wrote off half of that. We'd have to look at the yeah, sheet. <laughs> That's a big, big bunch. That was the number that was on the sheet that yeah. I had. Was it? So uh, it was basically Medicaid and Medicare write-offs. I don't know what else right. you went okay. on there other than that. I mean, do you think it would, like, if someone were to read through this, you know, six months or a year from now and say, what, we wrote off $2 million. I mean, do you think that we need to have a better explanation, I guess is my question. Um, in my opinion, no, because the only thing I could add to it is it's Medicaid and Medicare write-offs. Rob, what's your opinion on that? Uh, uh, it's too much to have a synopsis of that. I'll, I'll turn one in. It might be a little more clear. The same thing that the monies that we receive um, are set amount. Um, 
this uh, two million dollars is that what you agree that? Uh, I, I would probably say that that is what was written off because we build over three million. Okay. Oh, okay. I mean, just, okay. you know, just as for public record, I think that if, like, a citizen had a question, they're, what are we doing? That just seems like a huge amount without an explanation. That's, I guess that's what I'm saying. Okay. Your call. I, I so agree with that. I would like to have that in there. Uh, any other questions, comments, or corrections? That's it. Thank you. I have no, no, no other. Having said that, I'll ask for a motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, with the chief's insertion of uh, uh, explanation. Ask for a motion to approve. I'll make said motion. And I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I also vote aye and the motion carries. Thank you. For tonight you have uh, uh, corporate claims dated February the 2nd, 2015. <coughs> We have 30 pages of claims in the amount of $808,984.34. The floor is open for questions or comments. I didn't have any. Thank you. I reviewed them and didn't see any problem. No questions or comments. I'll ask for a motion to approve the corporate claims dated February 2nd, 2015 in the amount of 808000 Nine hundred eighty-four dollars and thirty-four cents. I'll make that motion. And I'll second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I also vote aye, and the motion carries. We have uh, no unfinished business to carry over from the previous meeting. We have uh, two items under new business. The first item is two thousand and fifteen street sweeping proposal from the Department of Public Works. And I'll ask the director, Brad Merriweather, to come forward and uh, address the board on his recommendation. Good evening, board. So this evening, I would like to um, discuss the street sweeping program that we run annually at the Department of Public Works. And basically, um, the program has undergone some, some changes over time, some of that due to uh, like IDEMS regulations tightening up and uh, some, environment or some environmental factors that are now, um, uh, they, they're, you know, it's one of those things when you deal with regulatory commissions where sometimes for a few years they warn you and then all of a sudden it's very serious that you do what they're telling you to do. So there's some things that they've been telling us and telling everybody over the past few years and now they're moving into that phase of cracking down on people. So that is one reason why I want to look at street sweeping. Another reason is just cost. Um, our machine was purchased back in 2006. So it's now in that magical eight to 10 year range where a lot of big things can start going wrong. And they generally recommend that you um, have a plan in place to replace it in a, that time frame. So. These machines are about $205,000 now. When we bought this one back in 06, we paid $168,000. They've gone up. Um, I found a proposal for a place in Florida that just bought one that's identical to ours, 2015 model, and they are paying two hundred five. dollars so, so what I was looking at, there's a company out on Churchman called EnviroSweep that has about 30 sweepers, and they do street sweeping. And... So I, I set up a meeting with them about a year ago. We've kind of been having some dialogue over the past year about whether they could handle what we do. Um, and I was looking at some pricing, and I've since gotten another quote from another company in Indianapolis so that we can meet that two-quote minimum. And basically, to take over the six-month street sweeping program that we have, which is April through September, um, it runs about nine zones a month. I got a price for that, and then I started to put together what it costs us to do it. Uh, based off the machine, the fuel, the disposal of the material, which is going up every year, and, and like I said, the regulations on that are getting tighter, um, the maintenance of the sweeper, the cost that it uh, runs us to put a CDL driver in the machine, and then the improvements that IDEM's looking for us to do is to pour a concrete pad because we currently dump the material behind our shop, and then we take the loader, we load it into dumpsters, and we haul it out. And the cost to haul it out is pretty expensive because raised charges by the ton. 
they charge like a hundred dollar trip charge and then a, a, like thirty dollars per ton on top of that and some of these dumpsters can run you know 13 18 tons so you're looking at sometimes six seven eight hundred dollars for one dumpster to haul it out so what I did and I'm not sure if you guys have this sheet uh, but I kind of broke our cost down. So basically with fuel, I did an annual average of about 1,200 gallons of gas, diesel. Um, looking at the disposal, we're averaging about $1,600, $1,600 per month. And the driver runs us about 11000 a year. So basically the fuel is about 3400 and I'll pass this around if you guys want to look at it. The disposal I had at 9600 the driver's at 11500 The cost of the sweeper broken down over eight years is $25,625. And then I took all of our bills that we've had for the past eight years, which was $33,550. That's an average of $4,193 per year for a grand total of $54,230 for us to do the sweeping program, estimated. Um, the two quotes that I got came in from EnviroSweep at $37,807, so it's a savings of $17,000, and then the other one was $47,000 from TerraPro. So EnviroSweep was the better deal. Uh, it's good for us because they're close. They would then haul the material out as they sweep it up. We wouldn't have to deal with the disposal. We wouldn't have to pour the concrete pad. They're wanting us to tie this concrete washout pad into our sanitary system. Because basically with their regulations, we cannot clean this thing or dump the material on any surface that's not concrete or something solid. Because their fear is, and I'm, I'm not trying to bash IDEM, but it kind of gets into some, like to me, and again, you get into the salt. They, they have issues with the salt. If any rain touches it, but yet we go spread it all over the streets. <laughs> and it's same with the street sweeping material. You've pulled it off all the streets, but yet they don't want anything to ever rain or anything to ever touch it so it's about leaching into the streams and I understand that but so it's going to force us to spend a significant investment to pour this pad tie it into the sanitary and so I guess by doing this it gets us out of that also so it also you know there are many times throughout this past summer and through a lot of summers where I have to bump routes to the next day or two days from there because I just don't have a driver um, you know you guys know we run up pretty tight ship out there. Summertime is when everybody wants to take their vacations. So there's days that I can do trash or brush, but I can't do the sweeping. And that, uh, that frustrates people because we have some people that really take the street sweeping thing. I mean, they really get into it. They go move their cars. They want the curb to be done. And when we don't come by, you know, it frustrates them. And it frustrates me as well. But if I don't have a guy, I don't have a guy. And I think with going with this company, that would eliminate that because they're with as many sweepers that they have, uh, when it's a zone day, they're going to be able to do it regardless. So I can show you this just to kind of break down those costs. I know it's probably a lot to hear. <clears throat> so you, I think, have the quotes in front of you. Brad, are, we, are there any questions? Yeah, do we, have, we currently have a sweeper, right? We do have a sweeper. I guess my plan for that would be if we, if we decide to go this route, um, to auction that off. Both companies are interested in it. And I know we have some other things. I believe police and fire. I know we have a leaf machine. So at some point this year, we would probably have an auction. If we were to do this, I would probably put that machine in there and then take that money and buy a leaf machine or you know something that we can use more frequently. How many vehicles do they have? It seems like, you know, this is a good deal. It seems like, but they must have a ton of trucks or a, a very large business. EnviroSweep? Yeah. They have about 30 sweepers. Yeah, so they're, they're well stocked. Okay. That's the bad thing with us. It, it was kind of like when we had the one arm trash truck. We have one sweeper, so if it's down, there are no backups that can go out and do that job. So until it's fixed, sometimes we have, you know, a period where that job's not being done. Now, how long of a contract are they wanting to? Uh, I just got an annual contract for this initially. I mean, I'm not sure if they would, obviously, with a lot of places, if you go multi-year, it, 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 that price can go down a little bit. If they know you're going to commit your business to them for more than a year, that's something I can explore. But this gives us just an idea of, yes, you know, an annual cost Understood. versus what it cost us. I got a question for you, Brent. Sure. On the Enviro sweep, 
uh, it does not include uh, them hauling off the waste. There was about 10,000 difference between the two, and it says uh, uh, street sweeping disposal not included. Well, they, they gave me two prices on there. It was 31,000 if you do that, but 37,000 for them to haul off the debris. If you see, that was for the second quote. There's two prices. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, the the first price, the 37, does include hauling off the debris. Dispose of debris, uh, I'll have to get with them, but that's what they told me. Oh, yeah, the first one at the top there, just that they will dispose of the debris, and then they'll also provide us with the tonnage on an annual basis so that we can report that to IDEM. But it gets us out, out of having to store it and haul it out over time, and then, like I said, Ray's isn't cheap when they haul those dumpsters away because they're extremely heavy. That's dense material. I mean, it's it's you know it's dirt basically, yeah. so very heavy. Does the uh, board have uh, further questions or comments? So the big, really, the big key here is IDEM and being compliant with them. Correct. For me, it is. I mean, I, I'm not big on outsourcing jobs. My guys understand this. Um, they know that this is a little bit different than any other job we do because it is regulated so heavily by the environmental side of it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, if that wasn't in play, I probably wouldn't be looking to do this. Yeah. But because it is, we have MS4 requirements um, because of our status as a separated storm sewer community. And so we do an MS4 annual, um, MS4 annual report and it's actually not annual, it's kind of confusing. It's actually every couple of years, but that's what they call it. And we have, um, we have audits and things like that. And this is something that just keeps coming back up. And there's a lot of cities and towns that are struggling right now because of how they're handling their street sweeping debris. It's, it's, and I've got something from IDEM, if you want to look at it, that is just about street sweeping. And so they're, they're kind of hammering everybody. I think they've got that. Okay. I yes, think we, we do. do. Okay. Yeah. Yep. You want this one back for No. Me? Yeah, I mean, for us, that's probably the key component is to get out of that. Well, I would, I would say I'd be interested to in going further with it and seeing if we can get it even better. Talking about a contract, mm -hmm. how long term or three, four years, sure, and then see. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they'd be open to that. that. I mean, most businesses explore it. Yeah, they, they most often they love that opportunity to get your business for okay. a longer period of time. Here's a couple of thoughts that we that we may consider doing. Uh, one is um, enter into an agreement with a company for two cycles, uh, 2015 and 2016, and then have them rebid. Mm -hmm. um, the first day of 2017 for uh, to see if we can't get a better price. Plus, uh, they would have mm -hmm. to provide uh, adequate insurance and naming us additional insured. And then I think we would want uh, when they are going, to, when they are in Beach Grove um, cleaning streets, mm -hmm. I would like to have a, a magnetic sign or something on their truck stating from the city mm -hmm. so that's my my thoughts on it Agree. Good yeah idea. good idea so what I would uh, the motion I'll make is to allow the public works director and the clerk to enter into an agreement with whoever the most responsive bidder who's your recommendation Brad EnviroSweep based off price and location to enter into an agreement with EnviroSweep uh, until from uh, uh, whenever they make the agreement now till the end of uh, December 31st, 2016. Then at that time we will rebid, and then uh, they would have to have adequate proof of insurance holding us as additional insured, and then the logo on their truck, magnetic logo, indicating that they're affiliated with the city of Beach Row. That's my recommendation. I'll make said motion. And I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I also vote aye and the motion carries. Thank you. Hey Brad, uh, yeah. last thought. 
Uh, would they print out a schedule? Yeah, we would no, do a mailer. We'll still do that like we yeah. do every year. Like yeah. We do? Okay, great. I think we would still advertise it the same way. That. Yeah, they do. I don't okay. think anything about the program would change, just okay. who's doing it. Hey, All Brad, right. while you're up there, sure. can you explain to people, because this is the number one call I get weekly, is why the stop signs are painted orange or the street oh. signs, <laughs> just to refresh yeah. them. But every day this week, yeah. or, you know, in the last week or so, I've gotten called. That's on. Part of the sign inventory that we uh, got with federal grant, and basically that is Michiana going around and uh, marking which poles are going to come out. New poles will go in with new signs. They were going to be here today, but due to cold temperatures, they postponed till hopefully tomorrow. So they, they, they warned us that we would get some calls. So that's, that's what the story <laughs> we have, is. We have. Right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have one more uh, order of new business that is not on the agenda, and it is a renewal of an annual handicap parking permit for Martha Corley, 235 North 19th. Uh, I think she's in the process of submitting all of her required information. So I'll ask for a motion to approve uh, the renewal, renewal of the permit so we can uh, get her squared away. I'll make said motion. I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I also vote aye on the motion carries. Thank you. That concludes new business for this evening. Comments from board members? I have done this evening. I do have a couple comments. Um, we have a lot of really good employees that really care about our city, and it, and it really shows. Um, I always believe in um, recognizing people when you see something good. So. Um, a week and a half ago, it was a Saturday, about 12.30, I'm going down Emerson there um, on, on, by 465, and Tom Hannon is out with one of his guys just picking up trash, all the trash along by that interstate. And, you know, while a lot of us, you know, that's our weekend off, and we're going to get groceries and stopping at the gas station and running errands, here's a guy that you just, you just never know when you're going to see the guy. So... Kudos to Tom Hannon. Um, also, I'd like to recognize um, the DPW. Um, it seems like all of our bad weather is hit on the weekend, especially on a Sunday night. And while we're all, you know, warm, tucked in our, our homes with our families watching TV, our guys are out on the streets making our streets of Beach Grove safe for the residents. So thank you to them. And also, if you missed uh, Mayor Buckley's um, state of the city address last week you missed a good one so a lot of good things happening um, in this city because we have a great leader and a great team that works here at City Hall so thanks all of the, the city employees thank you uh, if there's no further comments or questions or anything I ask for a motion to adjourn I'll make said motion <clears throat> and I'll second the meeting is adjourned at 629 p.m. We will uh, reconvene on Tuesday, February the 17th, 2015 at 6 p.m. in these chambers. The uh, Common Council will meet at 7 p.m. tonight. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the third and final meeting tonight. My name is Dennis Buckley, Mayor of the City of Beach Grove. And at this time, we will convene our Common Council meeting for Monday, February the 2nd, 2015. In lieu of a roll call, I will ask each participant to introduce themselves beginning on my left. John Jennings, District 4. Dave Harrison, District 5. Dan McMillan, Clerk Treasurer. Craig Wiley, City Attorney. Anthony Davidson, District 3. Ed Bell, District 2. And Dave Mobley has excused night of uh, uh, bad bronchitis and breathing problems. <laughs> Mary Huser Stewart, District 1. And Kathy Coates, Council at Large. Thank you. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we have. Uh, several presentations this evening and the first presentation goes to the Beach Grove High School boys swim team and I'll ask Councillor Jennings to help me with this 
the Beach Grove High School boys swim team won the Indiana Crossroads Championship. So uh, on behalf of the council and the city of Beach Grove, we would like to recognize uh, those young men here this evening. So if their coach and uh, the crew, please step forward. John, if you could uh, read the presentation for me. This is uh, officially from the city of Beach Grove. It says, congratulations, Beach Grove High School swim team, 2015 Indiana Crossroads Conference champion with the seal of Beach Grove, Indiana. Dennis Buckley signed city, city mayor. Congratulations. And I'll, I'll ask uh, their coach to say a few words on their behalf. Oscar. Okay. Okay. Uh, at the end of the line there is Sam Ulrey, senior, team captain, conference, all, won four events. Next to him is uh, junior, Villas Wischkowens, all conference, won four events. Freshman, Jack Ulrey. Um, placed well in several individual events, all conference, won a relay. Um, Tyler Ramsey competed in the 100 freestyle. Chandler Ferrer, all conference in three events. Okay. Uh, Brenton Strala, sophomore, first year swimmer, did uh, finished second in the 50 yard freestyle. Michael Trebing, uh, senior. Michael, help me out. Did I uh, don't remember where you finished? I'm sorry. Two hundred free relay, okay. So um, Christian Canders, a foreign exchange student, helping out the team. Okay, uh, Tyler Gallagher, sophomore, uh, one of our top breaststrokers. Chris McManus. Okay, Chris McManus. Okay, guys, I have a tough time seeing you and hitting the mic here. Uh, James Sneed, Howen Liu, a foreign exchange student. Uh, Jared Hook, and Caleb Bowser. Caleb, all-conference, uh, 200 medley relay, right? Okay. And this is only half the team. I uh, don't know how or why. We ended up with the biggest team I've ever coached with 28 guys uh, currently on the team. Makes a huge difference. I'd like to thank the mayor and the council and the people of Beach Grove for all your support and recognition. Thank you very much. At this time, uh, if uh, Bree Marklin could come forward along with her coach for recognition. <clears throat> could you uh, go ahead, John? Uh, this is from the city of Beach Grove. Congratulations, Bree Marklin, 2015 Indiana Crossroads Conference Champion in the 100 meter breaststroke. Uh, city of Beach Grove, Indiana, signed by the mayor, Dennis Buckley. Let me see if you can say a couple words. Congratulations, Bree. It has been a pleasure this season um, to uh, get to know Bree Marklin. She is actually a leader in and out of the water. Uh, her time, she got an all-conference uh, championship with this, and she was a 100, 100 uh, breaststroker with a time of 121.58, uh, which is a fantastic time for her and her best throughout all four years. She has done a great job growing as an individual, and we are all very proud of her. Congratulations. This evening, uh, folks, we are also going to recognize three wrestlers. Uh, the first one is Cody Conway. Is Cody here this evening? Cody? And Matt, could you come up with him, please? This is from the city of Beach Grove. Congratulations, Cody Conway. 
John Elway, excuse me, 2015 Indiana Crossroads Conference champion in the 106 pound weight class. The seal of the city of Beach Grove, signed by <coughs> Mayor Dennis Buckley. Congratulations, Cody. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure coaching Cody this year and last year as well. Uh, he's an excellent student athlete, has a GPO, GPA well over uh, 3.0. Uh, he's an excellent student and a great athlete, uh, always steps up, willing to help, a great attitude, and uh, looking forward to the next couple years with him. Congratulations. Uh, Ethan and Evan, could you come forward, please, for recognition as well? And we'll start with uh, Evan. Evan's been in front of us before as a state finalist uh, two years ago, and we hope that happens again. The city of Beach Grove would like to congratulate Evan Smiley, <coughs> 2015 Indiana Crossroads Conference champion, 145 pound weight class, the seal of the city of Beach Grove, Indiana, and signed by the mayor, Dennis Buckley. Evan Smiley, uh, he's an awesome student athlete as well, a GPA of a 3.61. Recently uh, decided to attend the University of Indianapolis for wrestling and scholarship and majoring in uh, marketing or business. Um, so uh, he's got a very bright future ahead of him and still got a few more weeks of uh, work to put in and see what we can accomplish and get back to the state tournament. Congratulations, Evan. And Ethan Smiley as well. Counselor? City of Beach Grove would like to congratulate Ethan Smiley, 2015 Indiana Crossroads Conference champion, Marion County wrestling champion, 103 pound weight class, 113 pound weight class, City of Beach Grove, Indiana, and signed by Mayor Dennis Buckley. Congratulations, Ethan. Uh, Ethan is uh, again another. Awesome student athlete is a GPA of 4.2 something. I think he's top three in his class, top two. Don't want to get it wrong. I don't want to get mad at me. Uh, <laughs> he's an excellent student athlete, great wrestler, uh, even better person. Um, and so it's been a fantastic freshman year so far. Um, I think he's won every tournament, but two or three, and he's always in the finals. So, uh, you know, we've got a couple more weeks left and make a run at the state tournament and see what we can get done. So congratulations, Ethan. Looking forward to a few more weeks. Congratulations. We have uh, one more presentation this evening, and uh, if uh, Michael Trebbing could come up, and his, if his family's here, could, he, uh, uh, could they come up as well? Michael uh, recreated the front uh, foliage in the, uh, at City Hall to earn his Eagle Scout badge, and uh, we're proud to say within the last week or so, he went through the ceremony, and we're going to have uh, an official ceremony here sometime in the future so that he can become an Eagle Scout. So, Counselor, uh, if you could read that for me. Go ahead and read. I'll get Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a city, city of Beach Grove would like to, to present the certificate of appreciation and recognize Michael Trebbing for his landscape at City Hall for an Eagle Scout project as the seal of the city of Beach Grove, Indiana, and is signed by the mayor, Dennis Buckley. Michael, we thank you for uh, the fine work out front, and uh, he also donated the uh, remaining funds for his project to the Parks Department. So, uh, Michael, we look forward to the uh, uh, ceremony uh, inducting you as an Eagle Scout. Congratulations. At this time, I'll defer to our Public Works Director for a special presentation concerning recycling. Brad? Good evening. Nice to see you all here. Um, with recycling due up tonight for the second reading, uh, I was asked just to come up and present some numbers uh, to kind of put into context where we are currently with our trash program and hopefully that will help further the discussion with recycling and 
maybe for, make it a little easier to, uh, to kind of see what we're trying to do. Um, currently, based off 2014, um, we handled about 5,000, I think 77 tons of trash last year. So we take about 90% of that trash to Covanta Energy, which is out on Harding and Raymond. They basically convert that trash to steam, sell it to um, citizens. That's used to heat a, a portion of downtown Indianapolis. So Covanta had frozen their rates back in like the decade of the 2000s, but in 2010 they sent a letter out to everybody, including us, um, that they were going to start increasing their rates, which they did. And they've done that every year now um, at an average of about 70 cents per ton, so about 2.3 percent each year they increased their fees. We're now at a 31.36 per ton to dump there, just to provide an idea of what that costs. We took 4,640 tons of trash there yes, last year, and so that was a total bill of $145,536. The other place that we do go sometimes, not very frequently, is Southside Landfill. Um, it's not quite as environmentally friendly. I mean, the nice thing about Covanta is the fact that they do convert the trash into steam, so it is being used on some level to do something else. Um, the landfill is a little bit more expensive, actually, by about $6 per ton. So they're at about $37 a ton. Um, we took about 440 tons of trash there last year. I think that added up to about $16,100. So total last year of the 5,100 tons of trash that we dumped, we spent $161,000. So I say all that, looking at recycling, I think the idea is, I mean, I don't think we ever looked at recycling as something to make money on. Uh, obviously, there's an environmental component there. But there is the idea that it is going to get some of the trash off of us. So based off some numbers back in, I think it was 2010 that they did the most recent study, the national average is about 34% of trash that gets recycled. About 250 millions of trash gets dumped every year in uh, the United States. So about 75 million tons of trash gets recycled on average. So using that average of 34%, if that were to reduce our trash, then obviously there's a savings there for us. So we've met with um, three of the big ones in central Indiana that, that do this and have talked to them about expectations, what kind of buy-in can we expect. Uh, obviously, there's multiple ways that you can approach the program. But uh, the number that they kept throwing out consistently was, you know, a lot of communities shoot for that 40% mark. If you can get 40% of the trash and your whole community into recycling, then you know it's great for you, it's great for the environment. Uh, about 80% of household trash can be recycled, but that's the, num the number that they typically see as far as uh, the combination of how many people do it and, and how much of a percentage of each home that they'll actually attempt to recycle. So if we were to ever hit that 40% mark, that would be a savings of about $65,000 for us. Again, that's a goal, probably not going to start out at that place, but you have to start somewhere. They use Speedway a lot of times as an example. I didn't realize this, but Speedway is recycled for years, I guess, and they're kind of viewed as a little bit of a pioneer in central Indiana for recycling because they've done it since the 70s. For whatever reason, someone there saw the benefit in it, in it so they started early. And now they probably have the model program that a lot of people look at when they say, you know, this is what we want to do. That's one of the communities they look at to kind of build it in that image of. So those are some numbers. Um, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. I'm sure you have a few questions. Um, out there, it's been a little bit of a, we've transitioned since Mayor Buckley came in. I, uh, I appreciate the fact that the first thing he did was he set me down and, and we talked and he said, you know, what do you need from me? What's working for you? What's not working for you? You guys know we had the one-armed truck. Um, and the first thing out of my mouth I said was, let's, let's get rid of that. That doesn't really make sense here. We only had one of them. It's a good piece of equipment if you have 20 or 30, but we had one. So when it was down, we would always have to run the route differently. We were running the route twice. It didn't make a lot of sense with fuel and manpower. So we've done some things that I think have made our department much more efficient. Um, we bought two new trash trucks, which have been great, saved on um, repairs, maintenance, and things like that. So I'm very happy with where we're at. I felt like prior to that, people would call in, ask me questions, and I don't like when I can't intellectually defend how we're doing something. It's tough, you know. You, you just have to almost be honest and say, yeah, you're right. This is silly, what we're doing. But I feel like we've eliminated a lot of that, and now I feel like I can 
really defend how we do things and it makes sense to me and I feel like it's about as efficient as we can do it. Um, but I do think recycling's something we can add in that it makes sense on a lot of levels and I think it'll help us um, a little bit financially at some point, you know. Um, so I wanted to put that out there and at least let you guys know that I foresee in the future a benefit to it even financially back to the city. Comments or questions from council members? Thank you, Brad. All right, no problem. Thank, Thank you, Brad. Thanks. This time we'll hear from Mayor Ballard's liaison. Good evening. Good evening, how are you? I'm doing great, yourself? Good. Good, thank you for the opportunity to talk to you guys again tonight. And I wanna start off with um, congratulations on your A-rated school system. Um, I'm not sure if this is the first year or you guys have been in an A, but I've seen the signs and you should be very proud because it's hard to achieve that. So congratulations. Um, just a couple things for you tonight. Some of them you've probably already heard about on the news, but um, IMPD, the recruiting class for 2015, we've been able to increase that by 25 officers, raising it to 115 officers for this year. Um, this was done just through an analysis of the Department of Public Safety budget, the public safety income tax revenue, and discussions with the City County Council Finance Office. So that's a very positive thing. That is just part of the mayor's holistic approach to reducing crime here in Indianapolis, um, but it's a good step forward. Also, one of the things Mayor Ballard's really pushing for right now is a mandatory minimum sentence of 20 years for any crime involving a firearm. And the statistics are there to show why that is important. In just the first six months of 2014, if there was even a 10-year minimum sentence, 48 homicides would not have happened, either because the person who did the shooting or the person who was shot would have still been in prison. Um, so that's what he's pushing for. Realistically, it'll probably end up something less than that, but he might as well ask for what he wants. So 20 years is what he's looking for there. And then also, I'm sure everyone's aware that it's tax season now, and I'm sure we're all excited. Um, but there's a program called Indy Free Tax Prep, and it's made possible through the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance, which is an IRS program. And last year here in Indianapolis, 6,500 about people participated in that program, and they were able to save $975,000 on tax preparation fees and they resulted in refunds of $7.9 million. So it's a good program, it's open to everyone. There are some financial restrictions. I think your income has to be less than $60,000 per year, but that's on the city's website right now, and you can either get on there and use the software yourself, or you can go to one of the sites where there's volunteers to help you do it. So those are the main things right now, but I was wondering if you guys had anything for me tonight. Council members have questions? No questions. I had one. Uh, yes. Did the city county council today, what did they do with the stormwater fee? Did they bump it up a dollar ten, or is it still like it was? Um, so there's information that's going to come out on that in April. Um, everybody in Marion County on their property tax bill will get a notice about that. It is a stormwater rate adjustment. And um, what we're doing before, it was a flat fee for everyone, and now we're going to actually how much it costs for your own property based on this, you know, impermeable surface area that you have or whatever. So they're in the process of hiring the contractor that's going to go out and do all those measurements. And so on your May tax bill, your May property tax bill, there will not be... Um, that won't be in effect yet. It goes into effect July 1st. So on your November, everybody's going to get a, a separate, you know, our tax bills have been coming together. Even though you pay it twice a year, everyone's going to get their new bill for the November billing, which is going to have that adjustment on it. That would not apply to excluded cities. I mean, it might apply to Lawrence, but it would not apply here. To be, I'm not sure, no. but I would have to find out on that for you which that could be good and bad for you guys. I don't know. They say they adjust, so it's not an increase. It's an adjustment. Some people's will actually go down. Um, some people's will stay the same, and then some people's will go up. I know there's a benefit to that. Um, we have over $320 million of stormwater projects that we've already identified that need to be done, but there's no funding for them. So we're hoping that ultimately this will result in an increase in funds that we can use for those projects. I agree with you. So... Very good. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.
<clears throat> Council, uh, you have been uh, presented a uh, printed copy of the minutes of the previous meeting dated Monday, January the 5th, 2015. The floor is open for questions, comments, or corrections. If there are no uh, questions, comments, or corrections, I'll ask for a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I'll make said motion. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. Thank you. Public comments this evening. Councilor? Yes. Uh, just one signed up. Liz Lamping. Good evening, Mayor Buckley, members of the council. My name is Elizabeth Lamping, and I live on North 13th Avenue. Thank you for this opportunity to state my support for Beach Grove Recycling. As you know, there are many reasons to vote yes on the second read for recycling this evening. But after reflecting on Mayor Buckley's words from the initial presentation, when he told of our young school-age citizens and, their, and about their desire to participate in this effort, I realized what an opportune time to show the future voters of our city that their voices count and are important now. Show them how good government works and vote yes for recycling. We are Beach Grove because we care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No one else has signed up to speak. Is there anybody who has decided they would like to say a few words? If not, we will proceed to a committee reports. Youth Council. <coughs> <clears throat> Good evening and thanks for coming tonight. Good evening. Thanks for listening. <laughs> uh, I'm Mara Kenworthy. I am a senior at Beach Grove High School and uh, I'm looking to pursue international business after this. So um, t today I am going to talk to you about what's going on at my school, Beach Grove High School, and much of what it has to do with is extracurricular activities. And now that's something that's really close to my heart because it's pretty much my life. I mean, I just got out of drama practice at 6 o'clock, and so I think it's important to note that um, if it wasn't for programs like drama club or... Um, the interactive media classes, I would not be able to stand here without crying to talk to you. So uh, what I'm going to start off with is I'm going to go through this packet of information I have. Um, and it's from The Grover. And that is a new bi-weekly newsletter that's coming out to update you on, quote, all things Beach Grove High School. And it's named after our mascot. Okay. So um, one of the things, the major things that would want to be brought up is that you can now follow Mr. Cox on Twitter at Steve Cox BGHS, or if, and if you're a teacher or administrator, you can also follow at BGHS Hornets. Now we are still trying to get some of these bugs out. There is a lot of technological issues. Maybe some people aren't as adapted to using the apps as maybe teenagers are, but we are trying. And one of the things that is going to come out on there is recently I and a, a select group of students went to the Pike High School for a youth summit, and that was by Wish TV. And that, that was a really, really cool experience. And it was filmed and is now on YouTube. So if you would like to go check that out, I really do, I do think that it is beneficial. There was a lot of questions that were discussed there that were very thought provoking, especially for a modern urban society and a urban like teaching setting. So um, Mr. Cox did say that he would try to tweet that out once he figured out how to do that. <laughs> so <laughs> if you want to check that out, you might want to make a Twitter page just for that. But now I'll move on to some more news. 
And at the Lady Hornets basketball, they will go to the IHSAA sectional. That will start next Tuesday, February 10th at Green Castle. And of course, there'll, there'll be Beach Grove versus Danville at 7 p.m. In more sports, <laughs> Tuesday, February 3rd, is boys swimming and diving at Mooresville, 5.30 p.m. So if you wanted to see the <laughs> lovely men that were just up here actually in the water, that's your opportunity. And there's Thursday, February 5th, which is Varsity and JV Girls Basketball Assassina at 6 p.m. Girls Swimming Sectional at North Central, 5.30 p.m. <coughs> Boys Freshman Basketball at Lawrence North, 6 p.m., which is the Marion County Tournament. And Friday, February 6th, the Boys Varsity and JV Basketball at Newcastle, Newcastle, 6 p.m. And Saturday, February 7th, is Girls Swimming and Diving Sectional at North Central. Boys Freshman Basketball, Marion County Tournament, to be announced. Boys Varsity and JV Basketball Home versus Monrovia, 6 p.m., and Boys Wrestling, Wrestling Regional at Perry Meridian. Goodness. Uh, another thing that happened at Beach Grove High School was BG Idol. I don't know if any of you guys went to it, but it was spectacular <laughs> this year. Uh, the winners for the junior division were the People's Choice Award went to Caitlin Keeney, who sang Shake It Off. Fourth place went to Destiny Ham and Chloe Hensel with Lips Are Moving. Third place went to Aubrey Dots in What Can I Say. Second place went to Raymond Shipley, Dancing to Halo. And first place went to Paige Lamar, who sang an a cappella version of Gonna Get Over You. In the senior division, the People's Choice went to Emily West, singing Candle on the Water. Fourth place, a new singer to our stage, Mr. Austin Doyle, with a country rendition of Somebody's Heartbreak. Third place, Zachary Seip, as his performance took us through the decades of music and dance. That was the one, if you went there, with the, the stick figure glowing. That was, if you, if you didn't get to get a chance to see that live, I do suggest buying a DVD. That was, that was worth it, in my opinion. Second place, a new young lady to Beach Grove, Miss Faith Noggle, singing right there. And first place went to Manny Mondragon and Giagene Cannon who had the audience roaring with their dance routine. And next, we have yearbook news. I'm actually on the yearbook, and I'm very excited to talk to you about this. This year, our yearbook will be all in color, and that is something that we definitely want to get out there. In the past, that we have had low buying rates, and that's really sad because, you know, the teenagers now, they think... Facebook's going to last forever, you know? So they think that they'll always have access to these photos when they really probably won't. With technology always advancing, sometimes it's better to have things on paper. But hopefully we can get that turned around. We have, do have new advisors this time, and we hope that we can get more people. And if you are interested in buying a yearbook, you can go to yearbookordercenter.com and use number 8750 or email Mr. Folger at mfolger at bgcs.k12.in.us. So, and the student of the months were names named and the congratulations are in order to Olivia Malone and Sam Ullery. You just saw him up here. They were selected as the Edward Jones Investment Scholar Student Athlete of the Month. Another cool thing that happened was six Beach Grove High School DECA members recently advanced to the DECA state competition after their strong performance at Brownsburg High School. Now this is a big deal for a lot of people who are in DECA. And if you don't know what DECA is, that is the business organization. And that happened with Tia Ramsey, Jessica Kaiser, Blake Bragg, Allison Richard, Zach Caps and Avery Solomon. They are very excited about that, so I'm gonna make sure to honor them. Now, 
I don't know if anybody's interested in robots, but the Beach Grove Robotics team competed in the VEX state qualifying tournament last Saturday. The team competed well in the qualifying rounds, placing seventh out of 55 teams. And the team has one more opportunity to qualify for state. And with each competition, their skills with robots are improving. So the team is Bryce Money, Hunter Wilson, and Adam Cleary. And they're heading to Zionsville on February 14th. And now, <laughs> this is an email, and at the bottom it says, Nothing says Happy Valentine's Day like taking your significant other to a robotics competition. <laughs> it is a cheap date, though. <laughs> so if you've ever wanted to see robots live in action, uh, I guess Valentine's Day is the day to do it. <laughs> And we have the solo and ensemble choirs. So once again, the Beach Grove students are on their way to state for the Indiana State Music Association Solo and Ensemble Contest. Gabby Anderson, Taylor Cardis, and Elijah McIntosh received a gold rating for their district performances. Members of Sensations, Alon, and Freshman Ensemble, as well as soloist Tori Frederick, received a silver rating in Group 1. Dajade... Coward, Group 3, and Cynthia Warden in Group 2 sing beautifully, and both girls are taking home gold medals in their divisions. And Miss Karina Applegate, who smiled all afternoon with her silver medal proudly displayed. And it was a great day for BGHS singers. And then lastly, what I have that I added on here is uh, this Friday, February 6th, is the Indiana Association of School Broadcasters they are having a competition, and I'm a part of that. And every year we have had the opportunity to place in at least one of the video categories. And so this time we're hoping that we can take away the first place and knock down the, the bigger schools pretty much because we do have an excellent uh, video broadcasting class and club. And so, yeah, we're hoping that we can get that. And that's all I have for you. Do you guys have any questions for me? Questions, uh, council members? So really there's not a whole lot going on at Beach Grove yeah. High School. No, absolutely not. <laughs> it's, it's so dull, I don't know. You know, uh, I started laughing when you said Mr. Cox was tweeting because him and I have one thing in common, and that's <laughs> neither one of us know how to turn on the telephone. <laughs> so, so. He's learning faster, so you gotta you gotta catch up. You gotta pick up your own Twitter page. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you did a great you. job. Uh, the Greenscape Commission report is on file. Uh, RDC report for the month of uh, January. Yeah, I apologize. I didn't get that out. I lost track of the day. The month just went by too fast. Uh, we had our meeting uh, January 15th. We re-elected the same officers that were appointed last year, so nothing has changed there. Um, we took care of paying some bills. One was for uh, the roads from last year, because the RDC did pitch in and help out on some roads to the tune of about $220,000. Um, the mayor had Crossroads Engineering there to talk about the Greenscape. Um, as you know, a long, long time ago, there was talk about putting a greenway through Beach Grove that people could use to exercise, walk their dogs, and and you know ride their bikes on. And the money was never there, and we ended up turning that grant back in. So in talking with the mayor and Crossroads, the RDC is going to look at getting that started again and possibly applying for those funds again in May in cooperation with the city to actually start getting a greenscape built by like 2019 would be a goal. Um, one of the other things we did is we set out this year to give the city of Beach Grove $175,000 for roads or developments in TIF areas and <clears throat> the mayor came to us and asked for the first part of a grant to do the sidewalks on Churchman Avenue, which is a huge <clears throat> project as you all know and it's we're getting a pretty good return on our money, almost three to one in money. So. The RDC had set a budget of 175,000. Well, the mayor has asked for 134,000 to cover the first year of that grant, and the RDC agreed to that. So the first year of that grant is now covered, and this spring you guys should start seeing some work done at the parks, like the old tennis court being torn up and grass going back in there. Um, 
the new bathroom over at Hornet Park. You should see work there. We're going to get new carpet in there and we're going to fix the parking lot. So there's a lot of little activities going on. Um, I don't have any news as far as St. Francis. We haven't heard anything. Um, Robert Runner, attorney, reported that he didn't have anything. So I don't really have anything to offer you substantive there other than that we're in the same boat as you folks just waiting to hear. So I'll keep it short and sweet. Are there any questions or any concerns? Thank you, Don. I really appreciate the work that that uh, commission is doing. Well, thank you for your support. And again, folks, remember, we asked for you to go to at least one or two meetings this year. So February 19th, it's my birthday. It's an RDC meeting. <laughs> Somebody wants to bring cupcakes or a cake, and we'll celebrate. That's fine. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. Thank you very much. Public safety report is on file. Uh, Jim, did you want to comment on the ABC? I'm Jim Brooks with the Alcoholic Beverage Commission. Today we had two come before the commission. One was Walmart, which was for a renewal, and it was passed. They had no violations. The other one's for the the uh, tap house. It's going to 704 Main. Uh, they're having a variance problems. It's going to be rescheduled for March the 6th, and uh, but uh, everything's in order there. They just got to get the variance taken care of. So that's all I have. Questions for uh, the ABC rep. Thank you. Jim, thank you. Uh, financial report, clerk. Um, thank you. Uh, the first thing I want to do is go to the back page of the report. This will be online for tomorrow for the citizens to see, but the council has it on there. And what this actually is, is every year the council uh, approves our tax anticipation war, uh, bond to the uh, Indiana Bond Bank. But what I want to bring up on that is the interest rate. The interim interest rate is 0 0.665 interest rate, and uh, that is really helpful, and I just wanted to let you guys know what that is. Um, our city website, which was built by a few volunteers and myself, continues to grow and is packed full of information. It is the promise I made to the citizens of Beach Grove to provide them with open, honest government. Our website volunteers continue to volunteer their services, and we thank them for their service to our community. To date, the website has cost the taxpayers zero dollars because it is staffed by volunteers, and a local business continues to pay the annual fees. The website has received praise from many mayors, and clerk treasurers across the state, as well as auditors from the State Board of Accounts. The clerk treasurer's office continues to fill public information requests without bias or discrimination and in accordance with the law. We finished 2014 with a bank balance in our corporate bank account of $2,703,902.38. I only mention this because it is approximately 2.5 million more than when I took office on January 1st, 2012. The Main Street project is now completely paid off. We obtained a lease purchase agreement for the purchase of a skid steer in 2014. The interest rate is 2.38% and we financed it for five years. All of our lease purchase agreements on equipment are financed for five years. We do have a $2 million bond that was financed for a period of 10 years. We have two bonds from the 2004 and 2005 that were financed for 20 years each, and we continue to pay on those. The SRF was for approximately $1.8 million, and I believe the 2005A was originally $1.5, but both were financed for 20 years. I am looking into the advantages or disadvantages of refinancing both through the Indiana Bond Bank, but my thoughts are the majority of interest has been paid and we're paying toward the principal, so I am not certain it will be advantageous for us to refinance. The RDC continues to pay on their 2005 and 2007 bonds. In 2014, they received property tax revenue from St. Francis Franciscan Alliance and the amount of approximately $670,000. In 
That revenue is included in their bank balances, and I believe that revenue is still under appeal, so it should not be spent until those appeals have been exhausted. The bank fees for the corporate account in 2011 and 2012 were sometimes running over $700 per month. After renegotiation, we now pay a total of $50 to $60 in fees per month, and that fee includes all the bank accounts in the city. In 2012, the tax anticipation warrant was approximately $2.4 million, and the 2015 tax anticipation warrant is under $1.8 million. So we are going in the right direction with that. The annual report for the 2014 has been completed and entered onto the Indiana Gateway and the city website. We now have a capital asset inventory that is kept updated and that is included on the Gateway and the city website. The State Board of Accounts audit was the best the city has received in years. We have invested approximately $1.5 million in paving over the last three years. This does not include the Main Street project and approximately 500,000 in sewer projects. In 2014, we invested approximately 125,000 in the Safe Sidewalk Grant and approximately 40,000 in the Sign Grant. Brad Merriweather, DPW Director, applied for and received a FEMA SALT Grant in the amount of $29,695.79. <laughs> it came to my attention that there was a federal reimbursement program for ambulance service. So with the assistance of many, we applied for the reimbursement retro to 2011, and we have received $82,861.12 in reimbursements, and we will continue to file annually for these reimbursements. We had sewer liens dating back to 2009, and those are all now current as we filed in excess of 800 releases in 2014. The 2014 annual report has been completed and is available on the Indiana Gateway and the city website. All in all, we are in pretty good financial shape, and as long as I am clerk treasurer, I will do my best to keep it that way. 2014 had its ripples, but the office of the clerk treasurer never skipped a beat, and we continued to conduct business and complete the task at hand in a successful manner. As I have always said, I do not work for the mayor or the council. I work for the citizens of Beach Grove, and doing what is best for our city will always be my main objective. As always, my door is open. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate, hesitate to call or stop by. Dan McMillan, clerk treasurer. Questions for the clerk? If not, we'll move to compliance. Derek? Uh, for the month of January, we honestly don't have too much to report. Uh, less than uh, a dozen new inspections were completed, uh, mainly due to uh, myself being on vacation. Our truck has also been out of service for a period of weeks. Um, but on top of that, uh, the weather really isn't allowing for ourselves or for the citizens of Beach Grove to get out and do much around their homes, and we understand that. Uh, that being said, um, we spent the time uh, reworking our database, so we have a brand new database this year. Now that we know what we got ourselves into, uh, it's more streamlined, faster to work with, and uh, contains less data. Um, I've created, a, which the mayor has a copy of, and I'm sure I'll distribute to you, a GIS map uh, indicating all the properties that were inspected last year so you can see how they were spread throughout the city and which areas were affected. Um, and next month we'll start when weather starts to improve. Hopefully we can get out, we get our truck back, and uh, we can get back uh, into doing things. Any questions? All right. Thank you, Derek. Thanks, Derek. That completes <coughs> committee reports. Uh, we will go to unfinished business carried over from the previous meeting. We have a uh, Greenscape Commission appointment, and at this time I will defer to the Council President. Ed? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, as you know, Council, we do have an uh, appointment. Uh, it's a four-year term uh, on the Greenscape, and it's open uh, due to Mr. Modern um, resignation. <clears throat> I'll open up the floor now for a nomination. Does anyone have any nominations? I don't. I do have one, um, Aaron 
uh, Sherman. Um, she lives on uh, Third Sheridan. Avenue. Aaron Sheridan. Aaron. Aaron Sheridan, and she lives on Third Avenue. Um, she's really excited about uh, working and getting together with the uh, RDC and the Greenscape working for the uh, trail that uh, Don just talked about uh, and uh, going through the city. Um, she's young and energetic. I believe she'd be a good fit for the commission. And is there and no other nominations? I'll close the floor and uh, take a vote on her tonight. Or um, you want to wait till any others come on board? Have you spoken with her? And yes. she's. Yes, and the mayor has too. Mm -hmm. Yes. I stood by mine. Um, yeah. I'll ask for a motion to approve Aaron Sheridan for the Greenscape Commission. I'll make said motion. I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. We will make notification for uh, Aaron. She will be fine representative for that commission. Uh, General Orders number 27, 2014 is up for third and final reading this evening. This time I will ask the clerk to read it into the record, please. General Ordinance number 27, 2014, is an ordinance that amends Chapter 105, the Code of Ordinances for the City of Beach Grove, pursuant to trees and flora. Whereas the Greenscape Commission was started to focus on trees and flora and to bring awareness to how important these items are for our city, and whereas rules have been established concerning the planting of trees, inventory of trees, and the types of trees that are recommended to be planted throughout our city. And whereas inspection of trees for removal and to prevent migration of insects occurs throughout the year. And whereas the Greenscape Commission desires to have a set of rules concerning sidewalk issues and tree roots. Therefore, be it ordained that the Common Council desires to amend Chapter 105, the Code of Ordinances pursuant to sidewalk and roof penetration. Therefore, be it further ordained that the Common Council desires that the following amendment be included in Chapter 105 of the Code of Ordinances. <coughs> Section 105.10, Protecting of Trees and Flora. Add the following. D, when damage to a sidewalk panel occurs from intrusive trees and tree roots, an inspection should occur by the city. A description of the issue and photos should be made along with the recommendation to correct the sidewalk panel issue <coughs> prior to any removal of tree roots or the tree itself. It is recommended to use one of four recommendations to stabilize the sidewalk panel, temporarily patch, sidewalk meandering, sidewalk ramping, and flexible materials in order to save the tree. Should the city decide to remove the sidewalk panel and remove the roots, an ISA certified arbonist should supervise the pruning of roots. Now, ther now therefore be it ordained, the Common Council desires to amend the Code of Ordinance pursuant to Chapter 105. Now therefore be it further ordained <coughs> that this ordinance only applies to Chapter 105, the Code of Ordinances. Now therefore be it further ordained that this ordinance shall go into effect 60 days after passage by the Common Council signed by the Council President attested by the clerk treasurer and signed by the mayor. Thank you. Need a motion to approve general orders number 27, 2014 on third and final reading. I'll aye. make said motion. I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same sign. Please uh, register your vote. <coughs> Council members, General Ordinance number 28, uh, 2014 is up for third and final reading this evening, and I 
uh, tabled it until the March meeting. <coughs> uh, the reason for that is uh, twofold. One is I received notification uh, from the uh, Metropolitan Board of Realties, Real, Real Estate that they would like to, to come in and talk about the ordinance. And also uh, our attorney uh, received uh, a call from uh, a legal group from the Apartment Association who would like to come in and consult on the ordinance as well. So I feel it's better that we sit down and talk with them about it and then hear it on third and final reading at the March meeting. So that is why uh, I asked to table it this evening. We'll move to general ordinance number one, 2015. I'll ask for a motion to waive the rules and read by title only, please. I'll make, I'll make said motion. I need a second. I'll second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. This time I'll ask the clerk to read uh, into the record by title only, please. General Ordinance Number 1, 2015. General Ordinance Number 1, 2015 is an ordinance that amends Chapter 96 of the Code of Ordinances for the City of Beach Grove pursuant to trash bill. <coughs> Thank you. At this time I'll ask for a motion to approve General Ordinance Number 1, 2015 on second reading only. I'll make that motion. I'll second that. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. We will hear this ordinance on third and final reading at the March meeting. <clears throat> General Ordinance number two, 2015, is up for second reading only. This time I'll ask a uh, motion to waive the rules to read by title only. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. I'll ask the clerk to read uh, into the record general ordinance number two, 2015 by title only. General ordinance number two, 2015 is an ordinance that amends chapter 39 of the code of ordinances for the city of Beach Grove pursuant to the ordinance violations bureau. Thank you. Motion to approve general ordinance number two, 2015 on second reading only. Make said motion. I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same sign. We will hear general orders number two, 2015, on third and final reading at the March meeting. Thank you. That completes uh, unfinished business carried over from the previous meeting. We will uh, now approach new business, and the first item on new business is council appointment to the library board. At this time, I will defer to <coughs> council president. Ed. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as we have tonight, uh, this is a four-year term of council appointment to the library board. I do have a letter uh, from William Fenneman. He is currently uh, on the board and wish to continue his service uh, for another four years. I'd like to uh, have a motion with no other names for nomination uh, for Mr. Fenman, to serve another four years on library board. I will second that. And second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Who, who did the motion to approve? Yeah. Mary. I will. Yes. Okay. Mary did the motion. I need a second. I, John Jennings. Oh, well. Jennings. All those in favor of reappointing William Fenema to the library board as your, appoint, as your uh, appointment, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. Thank you. The council also has an appointment to the Board of Zoning Appeals locally. This time I will defer to the council president for uh, consultation. Okay. Uh, for the VZA, uh, this is for a one year term. We do have a uh, citizen that's uh, came forward and would like to serve uh, on the VZA. Uh, she is a realtor. Her name is Dawn Whalen. I believe uh, a few of us know her. Mm -hmm. She was uh, on the RDC uh, maybe a couple of years ago. She did a fine job. Do we have any other names? Not hearing any. Uh, I'd like to have a motion to uh, put Don Whelan for a one year term on the BZA. I make said motion. I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. Thank you. Does Don Whalen? Yes. Thank you. 
Next item of new business is council discussion on Main Street zoning. Uh, I will, before I defer to the council president, I'll ask our friend from DMD to step forward and and uh, a couple meetings ago, we, uh, the council was given a presentation concerning uh, residential neighborhoods in Beach Grove and Main Street possibility of rezoning. So, and the council was. Uh, informed that maybe by February there might have to be some movement <coughs> on what the council would like to do uh, in, in the future with the rezone Indy. So can you take it from there and okay. advise the council what, uh, what's been happening, what's going on here? Uh, good evening, councilors. My name is John Neal. I'm with the Department of Metropolitan Development Division of Planning. And as Mayor Buckley indicated, I've been working on the Indy rezone project, which is a comprehensive review and revision of our zoning ordinances. Uh, the last time we came before you, Tamara Tracy made a presentation. The stage we're at now with Indy Rezone is that we've got a complete draft done and we have are now vetting it through public comment. We're getting uh, detailed information from some of the excluded cities like Beach Grove and Speedway on some of the details that we need. A third thing that we're doing is we're getting comments from the public as well as some of the uh, specific interests, developers, realtors, uh, builders, as well as other interest groups to fine tune and revise the details of it. When Tamara was here before you last time, we thought that by this date we might be near the point of having it ready for introduction. It will have to go through a two-step approval process. The first is introduction and passage by the Metropolitan Development Commission. And after it passes them, then it goes to a second step, which is consideration by the City County Council. We thought we'd be at the point by now where we'd be have it, all the fine tuning done and ready to go before the Metropolitan Development Commission. We're still getting some of the details worked worked out. So now what we are looking at is we're hoping to have it ready for introduction to the commission in March. And if they move expeditiously like we hope, uh, it would go before the city county council in April. Now, uh, I hope you won't hold me to that. That's our, those are our aspirations and that's what we're working towards, towards now. <coughs> uh, when we came before you, there were two, a couple of elements that we discussed in terms of what we would like to get some of the detailed information and detailed views from, from Beach Grove. Uh, one is the component of the proposed ordinance where, and this is a new idea, where we will delineate throughout Marion County compact and metro context areas. And what that relates to is when you think about Marion County, it covers such a diverse array of development that we have everything from kind of downtown, urban, densely developed to conventional suburban development that's less dense and even some undeveloped areas. Instead of creating multiple zoning districts to apply to that range of uses, range of development patterns, what we're proposing in Indy Rezone is that the county be divided into a compact area or a metro area. The compact area we envision as the older, more densely developed. It's where we have, a, more often than not, a grid pattern of development. Uh, alleys are commonly present. Uh, residential lots tend to be smaller. Buildings might be placed a little closer to the, to the right of way. And then, then the second grouping would be the metro context area, and that would be more similar to the broad zoning regulations that we've had in place in the past. The idea behind this is that for some of the zoning districts, we would then have particular development regulations specific to the compact area or to the metro area. These development regulations would typically focus on things like setbacks. How close to the right-of-way can they 
the, the building be? How much of a side yard setback is needed? Other things that it would affect would include parking, uh, the placement of parking in front of commercial, industrial, or retail uses. That would be regulated differently in the compact area as opposed to the metro area. <clears throat> another one that, another element that would be important would be in terms of the, uh, we're proposing stream corridor protection provisions <clears throat> in the Indy Rezone. And that is to say that you can't develop real close to our waterways. And the distance you could develop, you could get to the, the stream would differ in the compact area. Development would be allowed closer to the, the streams and rivers and corridors. And in the metro area, we would have a longer or larger setback requirement. Finally, the other one is that as part of Indy Rezone, Another proposed provision is that in the, that we are allowing what we call secondary dwelling units. That is to say that if you have a single family detached home, that a second and accessory dwelling unit might be constructed, is allowed to be constructed on those single family lots if certain conditions are met and the conditions would be different in the compact area versus the metro. The biggest difference would be, as proposed in the compact area, an accessory or secondary dwelling unit and in in-law quarters could be constructed either attached to the primary unit, dwelling unit, or in a second, in an accessory building, say a carriage house above a garage. In the metro area, the secondary dwelling unit would have to be attached to the primary dwelling unit. Again, more of a suburban character as opposed to a dent more densely developed. So those are some of the major provisions that this metro versus compact area distinction makes is important. And we presented this to, to Mayor Buckley explaining what we wanted to do and we have crafted a draft delineation of metro versus compact areas in, in Beach Grove, but we presented that only as a draft. What we are seeking from, from the city is your sort of expert opinion on what those boundaries should be, whether you be compact, metro, or some portion thereof, you know, split between compact or metro. So that was one thing that we did present before and that what we're asking for your sort of blessings on what delineation you would like to see in the Beach Grove. And I think they came out in November, <coughs> maybe October or November, I can't remember. I believe it was very early November. Yes, sir. But that's not a decision that I should make. That's a decision for the legislative body and uh, their input is what's relevant. Uh, so they're gonna make the decisions on these things. Um, also, we're dealing with Main Street from 8th Avenue to Emerson. And that was the, the second topic that we introduced to the mayor. And another aspect of Indy Rezone <coughs> is that we're uh, proposing some changes and some new zoning classifications. And we in explained these to, to Mayor Buckley about some of them might be viewed as options or alternatives for you to consider in your uh, downtown area. Uh, specifically, what we are proposing to create are what we call mixed use districts. And this would be a zoning classification that allows, I, you can have either residential uses, commercial uses, even some light type industrial uses, and the commercial uses can be retail or office, all in one zoning classification. The second key aspect of the mixed use district as proposed is that those mix of uses can be <clears throat> all in one building or in adjacent buildings. That is to say you can do a one building that has residential and commercial or you can do two buildings next to each other, one is all residential, one is all commercial, 
but all in the same zoning classification. And when we look at and presented it to, to Mayor Buckley, noted that this is an option if any rezone passes and that these new zoning classifications are created, they are an option that you would have going forward in terms of s establishing the <coughs> zoning classification for your downtown area, which right now I believe is has C4 <coughs> and C7 as your zoning districts. So we wanted to introduce that to you as uh, if and when Indy rezone passes, that you would have new options in terms of zoning classifications to help you attain your, your objectives and goals for downtown Beach Grove. Questions for uh, the gentleman from DMD. <clears throat> well, sure. I, I have a question about this model and, and these classifications. Are there other cities that are already using these zoning? The mix, mixed yeah. use designation? Yeah. Yes, th there are other cities. It is a what we like to call an emerging trend in in land use and planning nationwide. Uh, it's gained a great deal of momentum in the last ten years, and a big thing driving it is that it gives developers more options in terms of how to configure a development, mm -hmm. and that instead of going all in necessarily all in on residential or all in on commercial, they can combine them in a single structure. So it's gaining popularity. Uh, we are seeing it more frequently in the central Indiana area, but to date it's been sort of a, just starting to emerge. Uh, Speedway has adopted it uh, for their speed zone district. They were the sort of the forerunners in, within Marion County to set up classic mixed-use districts for their down, downtown area. So there are other cities we could look at to see how they structure that and yes. how it's working for them? Yes, you can. Because the other thing I didn't understand was between the compact and the metro, because it sounded like those were basically mixed-use as well. Is that, am I getting that right or not? Uh, not exactly. Okay. The, the, those terms are meant to be broad descriptors so that within a compact area, you, could, you will still have residential zoning, you will, you will have dwelling districts, you will have conventional commercial districts. It's just that if that C4 district is located in a metro area, it would have slightly different development regulations than a C4 district in the compact area. Okay, okay, all right. Does that help? Yeah, it does, because okay. I, was, I was just thinking of <coughs> this or this and then yeah. whatever. Okay, yeah, that helps, thank you. Um, I've got a couple of questions for you. Number yes. one, the current businesses that are on Main Street, <coughs> would they be grandfathered in? Yes, okay. uh, under the provision when the, a new ordinance like this is adopted, existing development is grandfathered. It would be if they want to change their configuration, new development would be regulated this way, but ex existing development does not have to retrofit to meet the new regulations. Okay, my second question is we have our own form of government, our own zoning board and so forth. So I guess I'm curious as to why, you know, I'm not opposed to what you're doing here, but why the excluded cities are not allowed to set their own and follow your guidelines. Just to give you an example, for example, like right now, if someone wants to put a sign up in front of their business, they got to go through Indianapolis first, pay their fees, then come to Beach Grove, pay their fees, and. <laughs> It's, uh, it's just kind of silly as far as I'm concerned. And can we stop the duplication somewhere and help the businesses out? Well, you're asking a bigger question yeah. than uh, <clears throat> when UNIGOV was established, it, the state legislature delineated the realms of authority and zoning was given to the county body as the regulatory body for establishing 
zoning classifications and the zoning ordinances. So that's why what we're doing will apply countywide, including the excluded cities. And that's because of the way the state law is written in terms of how, under UNIGOV, how zoning is established within Marion County. Um, I'm, I'm far from an attorney, so uh, that's, what, that's the way we have to do it. it a consequence are some of the things that you've, you've just noted, but that is, that is the regulatory framework that the, that the state created as part of UNIGOV. Thank you. Any other questions, for John? John, thanks for uh, explaining that to us this evening and coming back out. And I'm guessing Maury will, will notify us uh, when we need to act. Yes, it'll either be Maury or, or Tamara. We'll, when we've got a clearer picture of, you know, our exact timetable, uh, we will let you know sort of our deadline for having the, uh, your version of the compact area for, for Beach Grove. Because what we would want to do is, as part of adopting the ordinance, the comprehensive change in the ordinances, we would also adopt a map that does delineate countywide where the compact area and metro areas are. So Maury and or Tamara will contact you to let you know <clears throat> when we need that, what you want to see for Beach Grove. All right, thank you. Okay. This time I'll defer to Council President for uh, response. Ed? Well, in my opinion, uh, I would like to have a little more time to look like at Speedway and, and get get some opinions um, with what what we're needing to do. Um, do we have any other discussion here about that? I'd like to have some someone to go on the council with me uh, to get some opinions. Well, I, yeah, I would mm -hmm. do that, but I'm not a good as far as I don't know businesses zoning I'm not good with the zoning as it is right. but I I do have a lot of questions about does this replace because it, I, you answered my question about the complex and the metro and but that sounds like it's just adding another layer in there and I, so I'm, I'm just a little not sure what it, what why do it? One, one point I, I didn't mention here, but I think Tamara did in previous ones, is NDB zone is not a remapping of the zoning districts. We're not changing where C4s are located as part of the adoption of NDB zone. It is merely the regulatory text for the district. So now it'll say, here is what you can do in a C4 or a D5. It will not change where on the map the D5 or the C4 or the C7 districts are, just their regulatory framework. <clears throat> that, yeah, that, okay, I get it. Sorry. Because that, no, that, that's what I was like, well, I'm trying to figure out well, what are you trying to do? But, okay, that makes sense. And I would like also uh, for the council, um, what are we <clears throat> being asked to do tonight? Uh, to approve anything? No, you just be. Uh, just this is just more for your information, so that you can make a, an informed decision, probably okay. this summer. That's the way I'm getting it. All right, that's what I'd like to do. If not a little before this. Okay, <laughs> I would like to go to some other uh, communities and see how they're working out, okay. especially the included cities. The included. All right. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank, thank you very much. Ed, thank you. Council, thank, thank you. you. That concludes new business. Uh, council comments beginning on my far right. John? <coughs> I'm only here so I don't get fined. <laughs> <laughs> I have no comments this evening. <laughs> you didn't watch the Marshawn Lynch interview? <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? I have to explain it to you? <laughs> wow. <clears throat> I'm glad I'm here. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess every time uh, we have a youth council person here, uh, I get really impressed. And the young lady that was here tonight was very informative. Yeah. And uh, 
I just can't tell you, after watching the news before I come and seeing kids in different parts of this country doing some really weird things, it's nice to, and refreshing to see a young lady that's really into her school. And uh, I really appreciate it. I actually will say when we first started this, and I know Anthony brought it up, and I had heard all the bad things that, that, you know, it never worked before, it never did this. You know what, Anthony, that's the best thing you've ever done. <laughs> you brought that back, and I'm glad you did. Thank you. Anthony? Uh, <coughs> thanks, Dave. Um, <laughs> I'll try to I'd just like to thank all the, uh, the high school uh, students that came out. Uh, thank you to our Eagle Scout. Um, as you heard, when we have wonderful things going on you know, with the high school, um, I just encourage all the citizens to get out and support uh, the uh, local schools and the, and the sports and the extracurricular activities that they got going on out there. I'd also like to congratulate Aaron Sheridan uh, on the Greenscape Commission, William Fenema, and Don Whalen uh, for their respective positions as well. Um, and... Other than that, looking forward to baseball season starting soon. All right. So Good. That means warm weather. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all for coming and attending tonight. It's very important to see uh, citizens out there to, to know what's going on. Um, I'm going to give an update uh, also with the council. Um, I had mentioned it several months ago, but we had budgets and everything else. Uh, I'm going to form a committee uh, to get started on uh, revamping the employee handbook. Uh, I'm going to have it uh, involve uh, employees as well as department heads. Um, it'll probably be in the next couple of weeks to get started on it. And uh, I think it, it's <laughs> we've been needing it for a long time, so uh, it's coming. So I wanted to give you an update on that. Um, once again, as well, we have some fantastic athletes, uh, Peach Grove. And uh, once again, I'm amazed with the swimming team, wrestling, and uh, all those boys and girls from the middle school and the high school. It's, it's great seeing that. So thank you. I'll just reiterate what all these gentlemen in front of me said. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. And uh, we hope to see you again here next month. <clears throat> Nothing left to say. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, Council. At this time, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll make said motion. I second that. The meeting is adjourned at 8, 19 p.m. We will reconvene on Monday, March the 2nd, 2015 at 7 p.m. Yeah.